All right, we're going to start this lecture off by talking about the health-related components of fitness. You'll have to bear with me. This is the first time I've used this tablet. My handwriting is normally bad, but it's even worse now that I have to use this tablet. So let's start this off. We're going to talk about the health related components of fitness and really how they're used in pre-testing and uh, why they should be used. So let's start off with muscle strength. We're also going to talk about muscle endurance. We're going to talk about cardiorespiratory endurance. And we're going to talk about body composition. I'm just going to write body comp down here. So we got body comp and flexibility. And these are our five health-related components of fitness. Now let's talk about how we would use these in pre-testing. So for muscle strength, we do a one rep max. So it's a one repetition maximum, meaning that the, the largest amount or the greatest amount of weight that you can lift one time. Typically you would do this in a weight training class or physical conditioning where you would have access to weights. So you could do this on machines with a chest press or a leg press. You could also do a one rep max with a standard bench press or squat. So it's an estimate of strength. How much weight can you lift one time? There are also um, estimated one rep max charts based off of repetitions. So let's say I put 135 pounds on and I rep it out 10 times. Based on that, I can use that chart and find out what my one rep max is. That's a little safer than doing your one rep max because there is a greater risk for injury anytime you do a one rep max. Um, let's look at muscle endurance. So we've got sit ups for one minute, would be a good example. Um, typically, in the classes that I teach, I'll do push ups for one minute to test the upper body muscle endurance. I'll do sit ups for one minute to test the core muscle endurance. I also do lunges for one minute. And most classes, most activity classes, don't do that. I do just to test the lower body muscle endurance because I think it's extremely important. But with the push-ups and sit-ups, there are a lot of normative charts. So if you wanted to compare yourself to an average population, um, there's plenty of information out there for the sit-ups and the push-ups. So for cardiorespiratory endurance, a common test that's used is a one and a half mile run. So if you were in a class like boot camp or physical conditioning where you're going to do a lot of running, that would be a good test. If you were in a kickboxing class, a good cardiorespiratory endurance test would be like a three-minute step test. If you were in a walking class, a one-mile walk slash run test would be good. So there are a lot of different ones that are sports-specific to classes, but a one-and-a-half-mile run is pretty common. For body comp, um, skin folds. So that's where you're using calipers to measure, um, to pinch subcutaneous body fat. And then uh, you go to certain sites along the body and then add all those sum of skin folds up. And based on that, you can find out your percent body fat. Um, bioelectrical impedance is also fairly popular now. There's a lot of machines out there that technology has improved. And it um, works off conduction rate. It sends an electrical signal through your body. And, and based on that, it can get a a rough estimate of your body composition so that's also fairly common and uh, flexibility you would have a sit and reach and that's going to measure lower back and hamstring flexibility there are other measures of flexibility but sit and reach is probably the most common so if you're reading books about measurement um, sit and reach is, is used quite a bit because there's a lot of data on sit and reach Anytime you start a new program, you want to do some sort of 
pretesting. And your pretesting isn't limited to just these health related components. Um, other common areas that you would measure would be blood pressure. That's extremely important if you're going to start a weight training program or cardiovascular endurance program or cardiorespiratory endurance program. Um, because anytime you get really high heart rates, um, either from straining from lifting weights or uh, from doing intensive exercise, it's going to cause your blood pressure to, to rise. And so you may have noticed here I've, I've listed cardiorespiratory endurance. Some literature will say cardiovascular endurance, but the only problem here is they're leaving out the pulmonary system when they say cardiovascular. And we want to include both because the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system work together to get oxygen out to the tissue. So that's the reason I, I wrote cardiorespiratory there. So when you start your pretesting, you're not limited to these. You, could, you need to do blood pressure. You, uh, resting heart rate would be good. That would be one that you can go back and compare to your cardiorespiratory endurance pre and post test measure. And so if you're post test here, goes down at the end of the semester. So let's say we, we did our one and a half mile run, our heart rate goes down for that, or our time goes down for that, and our resting heart rate goes down, then we can be pretty confident that our, our cardiorespiratory endurance has improved because both can be measures of cardiorespiratory endurance. So anytime you start a new program, you want to start off with your pretesting. That's going to tell you your base level of fitness. So you need to know where you start at, otherwise if you did some sort of test at the end you would have no idea if you improved or not. And I always have my students keep some sort of workout log. I have them keep a journal so they keep track of what they do each day. We use heart rate monitors in class and so what they typically will record is um, heart rate and time and the activity that we did because that can be important as well because if you don't want to wait all the way to the end of the semester to see if you're improving you can use that workout log and go back in and compare it and I'll explain just how that works in just a second so you would start off with the pretest you would keep a workout log and keep track of what you do every day and then you would do some sort of post testing at the end that's going to tell you how much you improve now let me explain how a lot of my classes work I work in cycles of exercise and the reason I do that is I don't want to get bored in class so I'm always wanting to do something different but there's also an underlying reason in that it helps you improve a little faster if you're always um, keeping the body in a, in a state of muscle confusion you know, so that you're always shocking the body so I normally start off with some sort of routine just a basic routine. Let's say this is a kickboxing class and I'm just teaching them the basic moves we're going to use throughout the class. And then the next day I might do um, like a one minute station. Here I might do three minute stations. Um, I might do a step routine and a kicking drill and a boso ball routine and a lane station. So for about seven or eight days in a row I'm doing something different. But we eventually come back to that routine but we make it tougher. The good thing about our workout log is the first time we did it, I have, have them wear heart rate monitors so they record their heart rate and their time. That's 20 minutes. And so that once we get through the cycle of exercise and we come back around and start the routine over, I always try to make the routine tougher. But sometimes what you see is students' heart rates go down. Even if we go a little bit longer and make it more intense, sometimes we see their heart rates go down. And that's really where the workout log is useful because about mid-semester or so, they can say, hey, when I first did that routine, my heart rate was 150. And it was a much easier routine than the second one. And why is my heart rate going down? Well probably what's happening, that's normally around the seventh or eighth, eighth week of class, is their body has adapted to that exercise. So their muscle endurance has improved, their cardiorespiratory endurance has improved, and most likely their flexibility has improved. And all those areas combined together are causing that heart rate to drop. So the muscle endurance is getting easier for them to do like some of the conditioning in the routine. So they're doing a lot of repetitions with body weight. 
Um, the cardiorespiratory endurance has improved because they're they're keeping their heart rate up high for a longer period of time, so their body's kind of adapting to that. And here with the flexibility, their range of motion is improving because they're doing a bunch of high kicks and stuff. And since they're becoming more flexible, they're not getting as much resistance from the muscle, and so the muscle is no longer acting like a brake that they have to fight against, and so that their heart rate is going down, even though the routine is much harder. If they were to do that second routine on the very first day, we would probably see heart rates of 170, 180, because it is a pretty tough routine. But since we were doing it a mid-semester, and their body has gone through this complete cycle of exercise before we went back in and did the routine again, we're actually seeing their heart rates drop. So um, that's the reason a workout log can be extremely important because normally a, a, a class goes for 16 weeks on the, at the college level. So if you don't want to have to wait 16 weeks to see if you've changed, this workout log can be useful. It can also be useful if, if certain areas don't change. So like if your body comp didn't drop as much, you can go back into that workout log and say, well, I wasn't really working out that hard. My heart rates were pretty low. My intensity wasn't that high, so I probably wasn't burning too many calories. That maybe that's why my body comp didn't change, or maybe your cardiorespiratory endurance changed a lot. And you can go back to that workout log and say, "Yeah, almost every workout, I'm recording heart rates of like 160, 170, and I did that all semester long. It should improve." So those workout logs can tell you a whole bunch of about how hard you trained and so if you need to make changes or improvements or you just like the workout that you have you have a record of it so it, it's always good to keep track of so I hope this explains the health related components and the importance of doing pre and post testing next time we're gonna take these same health related components or these first three here and we're gonna link them to energy systems so that you can understand kind of the physiology behind um, these health related components. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this really um, gave you a good explanation of the health related components of fitness and why you need to do pre and post testing. And I'll see you in the next video.